Hello again. Today our topic on computer system architecture course is stack organization. In the last video we discussed general register organization. A stack is a storage device that stores information in such a manner that the item stored last is the first item retrieved. And it is also called last and first out list. The register that holds the address of the stack is called a stack pointer. The stack pointer always points to the top of the stack. There are two operations on the stack. Insertion, also known as push, and deletion, known as pop. A stack can be implemented using registers or using memory. Here we have a 64 word register stack. So the size of the stack pointer should be six bits at least, since two to the power six equals 64. We have three items in this stack, A, B, and C. Item C is in the top of the stack, so the content of the stack pointer is three. To remove an item from the stack, the stack is popped by reading its top, and the contents of the stack pointer should be decremented by one. And to insert a new item, for example, D, the stack is pushed by incrementing the stack pointer and writing a word in the next higher location in the stack. So now the stack pointer points to location four, which is the top of the stack. Data register calls the binary data to be written into or read out of the stack. According to this structure, the highest value the stack pointer can hold is six ones, which is in decimal equivalent to 63 here. So if the contents of the stack pointer are all ones, and we have six bits, adding one to this value results in all zeros. This is in the push operation. And when all zeros are decremented by one, the result is all ones. The one bit register fall is set to one when the stack is full. And the one bit flip flop or register empty is set to one when the stack is empty. Initially, the stack pointer is set to zero, the empty flag to one, and the full flag to zero. This means that now we can push items into the stack, but we cannot pop items from the stack. To push an item into the stack, the stack pointer is incremented by one, and the contents of the data register is transferred to the register or location addressed by the stack pointer. Note in this organization, the first item is pushed into location one, not in zero. On the next push, again, we increment the stack pointer by one and write the item from the data register into the location addressed by the stack pointer. Really after the first push, the empty flag 
should be clear to zero, allowing pops to be performed on the stack. If we continue pushing after location six ones, we increment the stack pointer by one, so we'll have all zeros and the item last item pushed is pushed into location zero. In this case, we should switch the state of full flag to one, meaning that the stack is full and we cannot push any more items. According to the previous organization, the push operation is implemented with the following sequence of micro operation. First, the stack pointer is incremented by one, then the content of data register is transferred to the memory location addressed by the stack pointer. We check if the stack pointer is zero, then the follow flag is set to one. Empty is set to zero, allowing pop operations to be performed. Again here, the first item is pushed into location one. And the last item that can be pushed into the stack is stored in location zero. So when the stack pointer reaches zero, this means that the stack is full and the full flag should be set to one. An item is deleted from the stack or popped from the stack if the stack is not empty. The pop operation consists of the following macro operations. First, the contents of memory location addressed by the stack pointer is transferred to the data register. After that, the stack pointer is decremented by one, and we check if the stack pointer equals zero, then empty is set to one. After any pop operation, full is set to zero or reset, meaning that we can push items into the stack. A stack can exist as a standalone unit or can be implemented in random access memory attached to the CPU. The implementation of the stack in the CPU is done by assigning portion of memory to a stack and using a processor register as a stack pointer. If this scenario is used, most computers do not check for stack overflow. The stack limits can be checked by using two registers, the lower and upper pound registers. In this example, 3000 is the upper pound and 4001 is the lower pound. After a push operation, stack pointers compared with the upper limit register and after a pop operation, stack pointer is compared with the lower limit register. The two micro operations needed for either the push or pop are an access to memory through stack pointer and updating the stack pointer. Which one of these two micro operations is done first and whether stack pointer is updated by incrementing or decrementing depends on the organization of the stack. If the stack grows by decreasing the memory address, stack pointer is decremented for the push operation and decremented for the pop operation. The advantage of a memory stack is that the CPU can refer to it without having to specify an address since the address is always available and automatically updated in the stack pointer. When portion of memory is allocated for the stack, we'll have a three segments of memory, program, data, and stack. The program counter is used to hold the address of next instruction to be executed. The address register is used to retrieve the operand 
and the stack pointer points at the top of the stack. These three registers are connected to a common bus and either one can provide an address for memory. Program counter is used during the fetch phase to read an instruction. Address register is used during the execute phase to read an operand and the stack pointer is used to push or pop items into or from the stack. A new item is inserted with the push operation as follows. The stack pointer is decremented by one, then the content of data register is transferred to the memory location addressed by the stack pointer. And the new item is deleted or popped from the stack as follows. The content of memory location addressed by the stack pointer is read and transferred to the data register. After that, the stack pointer is incremented by one. Next, reverse Polish notation. A stack organization is very effective for evaluating arithmetic expressions. Consider, for example, the expression a multiplied by b and it would c multiplied by d. First, we multiply a by b. Here, we cannot add the priorities for multiplication. So next, c should be multiplied by d. After that, we perform the addition. So the common math method of writing expression imposes difficulties when evaluated by the computer. It is required to scan back and forth along the expression to find the next operation to be performed. If we have, for example, A plus B, this notation is called MPEX, and it is the usual math notation. If we place the operator or the operators before the operands, then we'll have the Polish notation. Here, the operator is placed before the operands. And this notation was developed by the Polish scientist Lukasiewicz. If the operators are placed after the operands, like a B plus, then we have the reverse Polish notation or form. The reverse Polish notation is the form suitable for stack manipulation. For example, the expression A multiplied by B plus C multiplied by D can be written in reverse Polish notation as follows. A, B, multiply, C, D, multiply, plus. And is evaluated as follows. First, A is pushed into the stack. Then, B is pushed. Here, we encounter multiplication. So, we multiply the two items on the top two locations of the stack. Here we'll have A multiplied by B. Next, C is pushed into the stack. Next, D is pushed into the stack. Next, we have here multiply. The top two locations are multiplied. So we'll have here C multiplied by D. Next, we have here the plus sign. So we add the top two locations. A multiply by B. And we can pop the result of the expression. Consider the arithmetic expression, for example, 3 multiplied by 4 added with 5 multiplied by 6. First, we insert 3 then 4, then we have multiply, the result is 12, 
then we push five, then we push six. We have multiply, we multiply six by five, 30. Then we have add, the result is 42. And to quickly another example, suppose that we have the following expression. It's converted to reverse Polish notation as follows. Here you should be careful about the priorities. First, we can add A to B, but we cannot multiply. We have to add D with E. Next, multiply the C, add to F, and multiply the result in the square brackets by A plus B. According to this reverse Polish notation, first A is pushed into the stack, then B. Then we have addition, we'll have in the stack A plus B. Next, D is pushed. Next, E is pushed. Next, we have the plus sign. So in the stack, we'll have D plus E. Next, we have C pushed. And next, the operator for multiplication. So we multiply C by the next location, which is D plus E. Next, F is pushed. Next, we have the plus sign. So we add the top two locations, F plus C multiplied by D plus E. Here we have A plus B. Next, we have the multiply operation. So we multiply the top two locations, F plus C multiplied by D plus E. For today, that's all. Thank you.